This is a problem about fuel economy for a 2012 for the 2012 Priuses. A uh, sample is taken of 14 uh, users uh, who report the uh, the average of their miles per gallon is 53.3 with a standard deviation of 5.2 in that sample. The EPA, on the other hand, claims that the 2012 Prius gets 50 miles per gallon. Yeah, um, and our, the question that we're going to ask is, uh, is, do these data provide strong evidence against this estimate for drivers who participate in the fuel economy government? So first of all, let's create a, uh, a null a null hypothesis, an alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that the uh, the average miles per gallon is 50. That's established by, uh, that's, that's what the claim of the EPA is. The alternative hypothesis is that it's not equal to 50. That is that it's less than 50 or that it's more than 50. That means that we'll be looking at a two-tailed test. It's always good to draw pictures when you're doing this. Suppose that we consider an, an X variable that is measuring the miles per gallon of the pre 2012 Priuses. Then we're going to uh, assume that the null hypothesis is true. So the population mean is going to be 50. Of course, this population also has a standard deviation. However, at this point, we don't know what that is. We took a sample from this population. The sample size was 14. The mean of our sample was 53.3. It's not surprising that that's different than the mean of the population. Every sample will have a slightly different mean than the mean of the population. The standard deviation of our sample was 5.2. Now, although we only look at one sample, we want to think about taking every possible sample of size 14 and looking at the mean of all of those uh, samples and looking at the distribution of those sample means. From the central limit theorem, we know that the mean of the sample means is going to be equal to the mean of the sampling population. So the mean of the of this uh, the mean of the means is going to be fifty. We also know that the standard deviation of the distribution of sample means is going to be uh, the standard deviation of the original population divided by the square root of n. We'll sometimes call this this uh, standard error. Our problem is we don't know what this original population, what this original standard deviation was of the original population. Our best estimate for the standard deviation is the standard deviation of our sample. So we're going to use that as an estimate for the population standard deviation. So that gives us an estimate for the standard deviation of the distribution of sample means. The particular score that we got for our sample was 53.3, so that ended up a little bit above uh, the, the, the mean of this distribution. What we're interested in then is what's the probability of getting that score or bigger or the symmetric sister of that score or less because we're looking at a two-tailed test. If that probability is very low, then the null hypothesis must go. On the other hand, if that probability is sufficiently high, we'll, we'll have to... Uh, we won't have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. So we'll be having some... To help us calculate that probability, 
let's shift things to a t distribution. We need to use a t distribution here because we did not know the standard deviation of the original population, so it was estimated by s, and this sample size is less than 30. T distributions have a mean of zero, and in fact, we could use this formula to move every one of these x bars to t values, the t value for each x bar. That is, how many standard deviations is uh, is each x bar from the mean. And notice that we could use the mean of the original population because that's the same as the mean of the distribution of sample means. Now, our x bar from our sample becomes this test statistic over here a little bit above uh, zero. So that's going to be our t star, our test statistic. So there's our test statistic. So we're interested in knowing the probability of getting the value of that test statistic or something higher than that. And because we're looking at a two-tailed test, we're also looking at the symmetric amount of that, the area, the probability of getting so we're looking at those two areas, these, uh, these two blue areas. So let's pull in an R console and do some of these calculations. So we're going to assign 14 to the object N. That's our sample size. We'll calculate the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. Now notice you can put more than one command on the same line if you just separate them by a semicolon. We'll need the population mean from the null hypothesis. We'll calculate our estimate for the uh, standard error for the standard deviation of the distribution of sample means. We'll find the test statistic by looking at our x bar, the 53.3 minus the mu divided by the uh, standard error. Most of these variables as we've been going along, we've just stored them into objects. I'd just like to see that test statistic for a minute. It's not surprising that that's bigger than than zero. Of course it's supposed to be because it's uh, above the mean and it looks like it's about 2.3 something standard deviations above the mean. We'll need the degree of freedom which is n minus 1 in this case or 14 minus 1, 13 is what the degree of freedom is. So remember that the probability t function, that's like the p-norm, finds the area below a particular value. So if we're looking at our test statistic t, that would tell us the area down here below this. So if we took 1 minus that amount, that would give us the area above. Now what we need is to have two of those because we're doing a two-tailed test. So in our situation, our p-value is calculated by two times this area above our test statistic. So I'd like to see that p-value. I'm just asking R to show me that. And notice that the p-value is, well, ar around 3, almost 4 percent. And uh, for this kind of a test, that's a that's a, a, a really high p-value. If the p-value is low, the null hypothesis must go. But because our p-value is high, there is insufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. So, so the thing that's being supported here is the, uh, is, is the null hypothesis. We don't have enough evidence to reject that. I'll try and have a handout available for discussing this as well. Okay, there you have it.